Welcome to 10 Minute History, where we discuss a history topic in 10 minutes or less. This week we'll be discussing Matthew Perry and the Convention of Kanagawa. When Japan was forced to open their borders for trade with the West, drastically impacting Japan for years to come. So we gotta start this conversation with the Edo period, one of the longest historical eras in Japan. It was marked as a period in which Japan was under the rule of to the Tokugawa Shogunate. You see, Japan's government at this time was a military government, overseen by a hierarchy of military leaders. There was a Japanese emperor, but they were entirely symbolic at this time with no real power to speak of. But like traditional monarchies, the leadership was handed down from father to son. So there were dynasties. The Tokugawa dynasty was one of the longest lasting dynasties, their rule existing from 1603 to 1868. The Edo period was an era of prosperity for Japan, seeing massive economic growth as well as an explosion of philosophy, science, and academia. But it was also a period of strict social rule and isolationist foreign policy. During this time, traveling outside of Japan was forbidden, and trade was eventually limited to the Dutch on the small artificial island on Nagasaki's harbor called Dejima. Fearing Christianity's influence on the country, Practicing Christians in the country, particularly feudal lords, were either killed or reconverted, going as far as to execute Portuguese missionaries still residing in Japan. It was believed that by 1660, Christianity was almost entirely eradicated from Japan. Two now, two centuries later, we have Commodore Matthew Perry. During this time, commerce between America and China is growing. American whalers are active in Japanese waters, and there's currently a monopolization on coal stations on coal stations in Asia at the hands of Britain and France. Still working under the principles of Manifest Destiny, President Fillmore ordered a diplomatic and military expedition to Japan. Their notion was to impose the benefits of Western civilization and Christianity on what they perce perceived to be the backwards culture of Asia. In 1852, Matthew Perry landed in the Ryukyu Islands, threatening attack of 200 troops on the local authorities and populace unless he was allowed trading rights and land for a coaling station. Perry eventually left on the, prem on the promise that the islands would be completely open to trade with the United States. In July of 1853, Perry would return bringing his boats, his ships, close to the capital of Edo crossing Japanese borderlines and running in guns for an attack. The ships would be completely surrounded by Japanese guard boats, but Perry ordered to repel any attempts at boarding their ships. Eventually, officials and an interpreter were allowed on, relaying the message that no foreign ships were allowed to port in Japan. Perry refused to come out at this time, uh, staying in his cab cabin, refusing to meet with the officials. Going forward for the next several days would be in a campaign of intimidation. Um, he would eventually present the Japanese a white flag with the message that if they choose com chose combat, the Americans would vanquish them. There was a period of indecisiveness at this time from the shogunate due, due to the Tokugawa shogun being ill. After much internal mulling, Perry was allowed on shore bringing in 250 sailors and troops after a 13-gun salute was performed from his ship. These first set of negotiations would, would end with the shogunate reluctantly accepting a letter addressed from President Fillmore himself. A year later, Perry would return with 500 sailors and troops in tow, reportedly having three bands playing the Star-Spangled Banner as he entered the port. There, the Convention of Kanagawa would soon be signed, opening two port cities to the United States. This two-year negotiation would impact Japan for years to come. Members of the shogunate were inspired by the military power of the United States and wanted that power for themselves. This, among many other factors, would lead to the Meiji restore Restoration. The shogunate was eventually dissolved, returning power to the emperor. A policy of imperial rule was soon adopted to strengthen Japan from the threat of colonization. Maiji means enlightened rule, with the military and leadership reforming to, quote-unquote, 
Promote civilization and enlightenment. So manifest destiny. The irony, uh, to fight against colonization, Japan would slowly move towards an era of colonization and imperial territory seeking itself. The Meiji Restoration didn't last long, but this philosophy would continue through further military and government reforms, culminating in the Sino-Japanese Wars, the Asia-Pacific War, and World War II. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. I will see you next week with another episode of 10-Minute History.